So thank you all three of you for coming this evening. Um, ben van Berkel from Amsterdam, UN Studio. You're going to be building a um, cultural center dedicated to the seventh art, cinema. Clément Blanchet of, from Paris, Clément Blanchet Architecture. You're going to be building a contemporary circus. And Alfonso Femia of Atelier Alfonso Femia, I think you're Paris, Milan, and Genoa, is that right? And you're going to be building a three-star hotel, uh, affordable chic hotel. Bianca, thank you for that presentation of this really quite extraordinary master plan of this idea of uh, rolling hills, this extraordinary environment where architecture and landscape really merge into one seamless whole. And this is the first question I wanted to ask you is how did you deal with that context? Alfonso, perhaps we could start with you. Okay, is it thank on? you. <laughs> But the first question for us and the project is uh, to looking for why, uh, how is possible to create a dialogue with a very big project. Mm -hmm. And but for us, the context is the master plan, and mm -hmm. uh, especially because uh, our part of the project is the head, is one of the head of the project. And for us, the context is uh, the environment. And sometimes it's the project of the big of Bjark because uh, in spot there is the, the rolling hills start, mm -hmm. there's the relationship by the gate, and sometimes we decide to create it as a seconds, it is a rhythm, to take it as a shapes for two continues it is a relationship. So don't get the first words for us is the how looking for one kind of dialogue for two create one accordance with the master plan and mm -hmm. to, non, to lose the idea of the head of the project. What about you, Ben? For you, it was a little bit different because um, you're less subject to the constraints of the Rolling Hills idea and it's more an object set in these hills. How did you deal with this context? Mm, we, we were, uh, of course, fascinated in this idea of uh, introducing and building in a landscape and uh, of course, with a cultural center, you can think about the cultural attraction of mm -hmm. a project like a senior center and more, more than that. I mean, we call it, in a way, a cultural center. So we could think of, an, of a sculptural quality we could uh, bring in, into the relationship to the landscape uh, ambitions of this uh, project. Mm -hmm. So the rolling hills were, of course, an influence mm -hmm. because the building, the building moves up and down. Uh, mm -hmm. There is an underbelly even of the building and, and there is a landscape on top of the building. So the intertwining qualities of uh, yeah, the, the, the original ambitions of, of uh, integrating density and, and landscape were, were combined in this idea of an urban uh, mm -hmm. and, and cultural object. And you, Clement, it was a similar situation. You're again sort of placing an object in this landscape how did you react to the the context i think it's it's interesting to reframe also the competition and how we actually had to actually bring the essence of uh, bjark uh, master plan and also at some point to think that we had to do a design without the context because we didn't know who were our colleagues mm -hmm. so it was interesting to think uh, non-contextual mm -hmm. and then to end up being contextual so somehow our project is 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 best of luck because at some point we had to forget who were our surroundings because we didn't know who we were playing with. So we did something that is kind of respecting the context by deliberately uh, free up the ground to let the landscape grow mm -hmm. as, a, as a potential strategy to, to be part of the landscape and the context. The next question I wanted to ask you was the question of scale. Because there's kind of three scales that your projects have to operate at. You have the scale of Euro Europa City, itself as a whole. You have the scale of Le Grand Paris, Greater Paris, and you also have the very human scale of an individual person entering your buildings. How did you deal with the three and how do you juggle the relationship between the three? Uh, ben, do you want to start? Um, yeah, the, the, I thought it was interesting to work with these ideas and, and, the, and don't forget that uh, the more layers you can bring in a uh, project, mm -hmm. the, the, the better it is. So. So, for instance, the human scale um, we introduced through the way of how you could use the building l less only from the interior out. Most of the cinemas, as you know, or cultural centers, they have a bit an interiority mm -hmm. where they don't really talk so much about the, the outdoor quality. So that's why we activated the roof. Mm -hmm. uh, we wanted to create with that also a form of community mm -hmm. with the city and also a dialogue with the city. You can even from the roof have, an, have a view towards uh, the Eiffel Tower. Yes. So, so, and, and 
maybe going from the human towards the, the, the scale of the, the larger scale of the city, uh, don't forget if you, and, and you never know if you make a kind of attractive um, uh, building where people come back to, um, and I don't want to talk about icons because icons are over overestimated. Uh, I think a little bit. I mean, icons grow over the time, yes. uh, in, in, and you you never can predict if you can make a building what is going to be in, interesting or not. But 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 I do believe that if you have the ob ability to make a cultural object, mm -hmm. that people later hopefully can point at it mm -hmm. and remember it, and uh, will talk about it. Yeah. So so I think in that that. Quality. I hope that we refer to the way how this can become a um, project with many layers, uh, referring not only to the the, the, the the master plan and the ambitions of the master plan of uh, Bjarke, but in the same time also combining all these ambitions of the master plan with with the, the view towards the city, but also that you work very hard on the, the human centric qualities to mm -hmm. to make it attractive yeah. so that people come back towards it. I guess there's also this idea that an icon is something a little bit one-dimensional, whereas if you're going to come back to something, you want to discover new things. So you, you need layers and nooks and crannies that you haven't seen before. Clement, what about you? How did you uh, um, approach this idea of scale? Well, I think it's, it's, um, it's a discussion about playing different phenomena, mm -hmm. where we actually try to play uh, the project as, as a something that is very much layered. Mm -hmm. where we embrace the idea of very classical figure that is embracing the, the grandmother, grandfather philosophy and the classical seat layouts, and then to embrace the highly technological stratum. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of bringing up the idea that it can diffuse and even perform better and stronger, and at the top of which we actually embrace the question of collective memory. So at some point, the actual building is, is a principle of mm -hmm. layering different scales, different humans, different... Uh, behaviors, different memories, and at some point uh, provide the idea that it can perform uh, with, uh, with the idea of, of different considerations. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about the idea that Paris is here, yes, Paris is here, but there is this kind of relationship from the roof itself. Mm -hmm. um, and at some point it's also playing the idea that uh, there is this uh, relationship to time mm. and to Parisian issues. Which is another scale, the fourth yes. one in a way. Um, what about you, Alfonso? Because obviously with a hotel, you're probably the most plugged in to the greater city, as it were. And as you said, you're kind of at the head I of the project. I think this is an interesting question because uh, for me, I am from Genoa. Genoa, there is uh, every, for every moment, there is a, a free scale or a lot of big scale because the territory is every way mm -hmm. in, uh, around uh, uh, all part of the city. It is part is very interesting because I think this is uh, to do this also the, the, the issue uh, uh, ben, is, is very important to make understand all, all part of the building we must to create one uh, discussion with this uh, kind of uh, scale. Is the part uh, around the boulevard is one kind of for to make understand how it's possible to uh, create one relationship by the urban system. And sometimes we introduce an idea of intimacy. Mm -hmm. In this different uh, position of the building, it's possible to have every weighted free scale to discover the, the, the scale of the master plan, to discover mm -hmm. the scale of the territory, and sometimes to looking for how it's possible to create an team. So I think this is interesting because, because I think it's possible to develop in all parts of uh, elements, a, a, how the building is possible to develop uh, uh, in a different way uh, the, some part of the, of, of the project. I think this is the, the part where it's, where it's possible to create a human context. Mm. And this way, is, uh, I think all people, I like this condition and not to one special condition or, or, or intimacy or part of uh, it. This part of the master plan is, I think, interesting for us because it's the head mm -hmm. is normally because we have around uh, all of this character. Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously, Bjarke has talked about this idea of a landscape and inherent in most people's conception of what landscape means, there's some notion of nature, right? This idea of uh, plants, trees, ecosystems. How, does, how do you deal with that aspect in your project, Clément? But maybe you could start. Um, I think in, in the way we treated uh, respect to architecture and respect to nature is a way to dissociate them. And, and the way we actually approach the question of relating to nature is to 
make a clear radical distinction. So mm -hmm. we had decided to let flow the building and the architecture and let the landscape grow. Mm -hmm. So kind of the main generated membrane that is a green line is kind of going through the building and offering a kind of scenario of views. And so landscape ends up into a kind of methodology of views. Mm -hmm. And I think it's interesting that the building is processing this idea that uh, the relationship is, is very respectful and somehow allowing the presence of landscape be stronger. Right, so it's, you're framing it in a way. You seem to want to give it to Ben, so fine. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's always an interesting uh, discussion. What, what, what is a landscape building and what is mm. a landscape architecture? Mm -hmm. But, but I, I like the idea that you re can reinterpret as an architect the landscape conditions. I mean, if you go, go back to the history of landscape design and parks, beautiful parks actually designed mm. also in, in, in Paris, then, then what is quite nice is that, that often parks were used as, an, as, a, as a moment to escape from the city mm -hmm. and to liberate oneself in order to free up uh, together, to socialize and to mm -hmm. create a kind of other community than the community you have in your own neighborhood. So, so using landscape motives in a metaphorical way, mm -hmm. and then translate it towards a building I, I like a lot. And you know, and luckily enough, that is uh, proposed here in this uh, master plan. And we wanted to extend on that idea that you, that you, that you can maybe make an, an object in a landscape, whereby in our case, as a cultural object, you, you make a kind of sculpture, mm -hmm. and the sculpture reacts towards the way how you can go underneath the sculpture, you can go over the sculpture, you can... The building, or the sculpture be building, becomes almost a landscape in itself. That was the ambition of how we approached it. Absolutely. And what about for you, Alfonso? Because I think you're the one who has the most planting, if I'm, I'm correct, on your well, building. We decided how the central wave will become the very issue of the nature. We decided mm -hmm. to take the rolling hills for to put in the heart of the building mm -hmm. the very idea of the nature, but the nature not only for to create a landscape, mm -hmm. because we decided to arrive just hand-to-hand uh, -hand at this concept, because uh, we created two paths. One, we go down for to create a very connection, transversal connection, for to link the different scale of the mm -hmm. building mm -hmm. with the pedestrian path over in the in direction of the urban uh, boulevard and sometimes we, we go down for create a different terrace and the, the nature in this way we create a very different place mm -hmm. for to create a natural very for to live and not for only for to see mm -hmm. itself is very important it's also an idea of a discover how in uh, how in the whole palace we, you you discover in the interior uh, the, 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 the special relationship by the nature is possible also uh, with this idea of the buildings of the section is possible to enter into heart so of the building the to discover this is, is to take the, the people for to enter in the in the in the, in the building interesting because it's three very very different approaches for you know the same master plan with the same conditions and you have these extraordinary um, varied approaches another thing that strikes me as quite extraordinary about this master plan is that if you take a classic Parisian building, right, it essentially has two facades, front on the street and then at the back in the courtyard. But here at Europa City, you're really dealing with at least six facades because you've got the front, the rear, the sides, you've got the roof, which we've already mentioned a little bit, and to a certain extent you've also got grade and you have to plug into things underneath, which is part of the whole infrastructure of um, Europa City. Could you maybe say a little bit about the, the challenges and the difficulties and also the opportunities of that situation? Who wants to start? Yeah. Ben. Um, how do you know that I want to? Uh, <laughs> so you've uh, not been very enthusiastic. I though. like the staccato rhythm of this talk, you know? I mean, we all keep the same rhythm. Um, yeah, you know, I, I thought maybe it was not a challenge alone, but it was actually exciting to mm. think about it, that, that you can... Have you ever done this before? Mm, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I've even made spaces who f follow you. So, so you know, okay. like, like, you know, I think you can make buildings who are so kaleidoscopic mm. in a way whereby you don't experience anymore the, the building as a two and a half dimension object. What what is standing in front of you? That's also very, as you know, it's a very modernist approach to yes. think only of the object before you. Absolutely. So, 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 what is nice about the opportunity of this master plan is that you can think of uh, here of a building what you can experience yeah, from many angles, like you described. Mm -hmm. You talked about the seven facades I 
hope that our project is even having thousands of facades. Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, that was the minimum in, 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 You know, a thousand and one uh, facades. And, and, and simply because you can hopefully uh, experience, like in the cinema, uh, it in time, and by different rhythms, by going over the roof, underneath the building, uh, and that it maybe plays also a little bit with the programmatic differences in the building, that you experience something that is conceptually also to be found inside, like with a training program, and, mm -hmm. and that, that, that it is something that is going beyond uh, the cinema, and, and we, maybe we wanted to liberate also the cinema through these different experiences, so mm -hmm. we wanted to combine it with the concept of the building. I guess it also leaves you with the problem of what you do with the backstage. As you, you know, normally you have a nice rear where you can hide it. Where, where do you put it? How do you deal with that problem? You've got to put it somewhere. Yeah, but I mean, what, what is the beauty of uh, what we have here is that you, you, of course, you have not a theater. You mm -hmm. don't have a real backstage. Mm -hmm. um, but but where we think of, of course, uh, that's that's something we have to further develop, is to to use the building in so many different ways that you can use this the the room as 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 stage whereby you don't have to need a backstage alone mm. but that you use the rooms behind the stage maybe as an as an, a trainings program uh, mm -hmm. room so that it's only not becoming an en em empty place where nothing is happening and where sometimes a mm. decor or a second stage comes in in order to uh, no, so the building is going to be highly diverse in its uh, programmatic use and, uh, mm -hmm. and the leftover spaces are going to be even flexibly used in in time, and that's maybe another. Th that, so beco it becomes a kind of uh, how do you call it? Clockwise planning of use. Yeah, absolutely. Clockwise planning Which of will use. Bring yeah. us on to another yeah. question in a second. What about you, Clement? You are designing essentially a theatre, so there will be the question of backstage, and there's also this question of you know every angle is yes. having some kind of. Yeah, we, we we try to to do a building that provides both uh, formalities and informalities. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to propose something that allows different configuration of use, uh, whether the building is in use, whether it's closed, whether it's kind of happening. So the building itself is actually a play for. Opacity in itself, and by the fact that we are massaging the ground and we are playing with this ground following the slope to the main stage, mm -hmm. we have been able to, to kind of maneuver and play with the organs of the underground and bring up the water and, and mm -hmm. kind of highly uh, technological uh, configuration and consideration. So it's kind of providing different layers of views, and, and then the, the main floor of the ground is like a balcony on the main theater, and then you have the possibly a, a school for a circus, and then the actual additional bonus on the roof. So basically, there are different use, different configuration, and, and you can either play in different ways. Mm -hmm. So basically, you are able to maneuver architecture as a fact that it can bring, bring different use, different matters, different... It's like very much of a, of a play for, you know, additional things that can happen. So. We wanted to make it like a, a little fun. Alfonso. For, for us, uh, we create a, not a facade because uh, the building is very big. Is it not? Very what, sir? Uh, it's very big, of the building. Uh, mm -hmm. In interior, we decided to create a very void. For mm -hmm. create a, not a facade, for create a very space for the street art. It's, this is another opportunity for to make understand how it's possible to create a different dispositive. For sec, I, I like very much when the the cities uh, will become wow, the chronotopic system uh, on the deal where the space at the times is mm. changed in different hours of, of, the, of the day. If for, for creativity, we must to sort for the two dimension of the facade, but we must to create the opportunity where it's possible in different part of the building to create a life. If for this question, you put a new function in the roof, mm -hmm. you created these uh, loops, uh, transversal and longitudinal. And you create a very big facade in the interior for create a, every way one relationship very strong by the interior and exterior space. This is a very big opportunity for the, this project. Also, how experimental, because normally the functions is very defined by the program and uh, it's not possible to, to sort by these uh, constraints. Yeah. In a way, it's a, it's a richness, and you have uh, this opportunity of going under. What is actually underneath your buildings? Do you know? I don't know how far the master plan has got. Do you actually know what you're building on top of? Is it? Do you have some solid ground? Is it? Uh, parking. Parking. Okay. Yeah. Underneath. Okay. Parisian soil. Sorry. Parisian soil. You got the soil. Okay. Um, 
one thing that you all mentioned was the question, obviously, that you've got these multifaceted buildings that also have multifaceted uses and that will be used not just in the day, but throughout the night. The idea of Europa City is that it will be not necessarily open 24 hours a day, but certainly for an extended period of time. How do you deal with this you know, nocturnal diurnal, and how do you keep a building like that animated and how do you bring that into your, um, into your design? Yes, mm, that's an interesting question because I I think that that is actually the future of uh, planning, that, that mm -hmm. you think, I mentioned it already, clockwise planning, that you think about the way Absolutely. how active a building is in the morning and the afternoon and evening in the night, and hopefully deep in the night. And, and, and the reason why I believe that, that it is good is because uh, certain urban areas, especially um, on the outskirts or uh, let's say in the new development areas, you have the tendency uh, in the history of urban planning where you see monofunctional yeah, areas, you know, where, where the mix of programs are not happening. So, no. so it's not only a question of uh, that you activate the programs in, in time, but that you also think about the right mix of programs. And I think that that is really great that, that we do this in this master plan. But, but as I said already, uh, our, our project is going to be programmed uh, uh, with, with uh, the client over the, over the next couple yeah, of years. Yeah, because I, mean, I guess you have to get involved in the logistics to do this yeah. otherwise. Yeah, but, but, but the, the ambition is clear, and it's also luckily from the client clear, that, that we want to make a building that is really so organized that you can make it so flexible that it, that it is... Uh, so that, that it's not only pure and cinema, that it is also a cinema uh, or a cultural center, like I said, mm, whereby mm. many different programs can be introduced. And that's why we also introduced the programs on the roof, uh, where an, an open door cinema can be introduced, but what will activate a liveliness of an urban community liveliness, hopefully, mm -hmm. whereby people can meet and, uh, and, and, and see each other even uh, till deep in the night. And when it rains? Yeah, then you go in. <laughs> or you bring an umbrella. <laughs> or you sit in a car, you know, I mean, maybe hopefully in the future. You no, but you know these wonderful open door cinemas in America where you sit in the car. Of I mean, course, that's well, yeah, yeah, that would be a possibility. Clement, you already mentioned the, 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 the question of time. Yeah, I think what is also important to add is the, the way that the building, in our case, was trained to be a performance within a performance. Mm -hmm. And also the idea that we could record what is going on. So. For instance, uh, with the kind of layering roof, we could kind of project things that happen. There is the idea that there is a certain transparency and a certain democracy in the building, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is important in architecture. So there is this relationship that during the night, you can end up being a, the biggest carousel in the world with these trees, uh, these horses running around and, mm -hmm. and then uh, projecting some different events. So it's like uh, we are trying to play with architecture to record and to display what it could become or what it is about. I guess, Alfonso, for a hotel, it's a slightly different matter. You're not meant to be quite so animated, or, or maybe you are. I don't know. How did you approach that question? Yeah, the idea is uh, to change the vision for uh, normally what is you see the hotel, mm -hmm. to transform the hotel in uh, a place of a destination, and introduce the different moment of the life, uh, create a very active basement. Mm -hmm and also in section to have a different moment for to use it in a different way. And for to, to make an understanding, it's possible this is a very place for to meet, mm -hmm. a very place where it's possible also, I, I don't stay in a hotel, to, to create a very place. It, perhaps it's a very contemporary place because it's very near the connection uh, by infrastructure. Mm -hmm. It's possible to, to, to see for, for to eat, for to, to work. We create a very, very, a lot of function normally where you, it's possible to use, uh, to looking for in the city. And sometimes a very, very young space where it's possible to create one uh, dispositive, it's possible to change on the time mm. and not to prefigurate uh, exactly uh, how it's possible to use. It's for this question, in the competition, we decide to, to, to give a whole part of the basement, not with a very strong function, very linked mm -hmm. by the hotel, but very urban place. Right. To carry on with the theme of time, there's, in a way, a certain implied dichotomy in what you're being asked to do, in that, on the one hand, you're clearly talking about very specific briefs, logistics activities that, you know, you're thinking about how you're going to make these happen in these spaces, very specific functional requirements. 
But on the other hand, if I understood correctly, you also have to take into account the idea of evolution and change, especially since we don't know quite what the calendar for this thing is and we don't know how things are going to evolve. And also, even once the buildings are finished, functions will change, lifestyles will change, things will be different. How do you take that on board in your scheme? Um, yeah, that, that's maybe something I briefly mentioned already from my side is that that it is actually a requirement every client is now dealing with today. Mm. As you I think know, this is the new paradigm. It's the new paradigm because, I mean, for instance, in, in Amsterdam, we had uh, over the last years, I think, a million square meters of empty office spaces, you know, in the difficult uh, uh, times, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. so in 2008 and uh, nine. Mm -hmm. um, and now every building, what is an office building, it needs to be so designed that you can transform it to its housing. And similarly with this project, we, we talked also internally and, and also with, uh, of course, with the brief of the client about the way how the rooms could be changed. Mm -hmm. uh, not only in to uh, cinema, as I maybe explained before, mm -hmm. um, but that you can also use it as an as a as a platform, like maybe today as we sit here, mm -hmm. where where other parties can uh, give performances, lectures, or you know presentations. Also training centers we are we are introducing into the building. Uh, we already try to influence that flexibility in the program what we introduce now mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in order to make sure that you're not having a fixed image later on from yeah. a classical cinema. So we yeah. want to liberate and, and liberalize uh, maybe in a way uh, the, the cinema uh, through that uh, f future flexibility mm. by showing it already today sure. in the design. For you, Clement, I guess already you were expected to, you know, accommodate a multitude of functions. Yeah. Um, what about this question of the long term? Was that how well, did that influence your thinking? I think once you offer a concept, it allows mm. you to resist time, and I think it's important that uh, it's a resistance at some point. And we know that the building can grow, it can recess, it can change. It's not about a shape; it's mm -hmm. about a principle and mm -hmm. an organization that we may have proposed so uh, we we welcome changes also because it provides even stronger end result and i think it's important that uh, we propose an architecture to open the dialogue because i think you can reconfigure your building right yeah it everything and does there things. are different different configuration that may happen the roof can have different layouts uh, there could be different opportunities it can be summer winter mm -hmm. so it's it's interesting to see the building as something that can allow by itself the changes and wants the changes at some point because it's offering changes. Mm -hmm. So once we've said that, it's also true that the actual layering of the building can allow different shapes, different configuration, different program. So I'm not willing to change everything. I'm saying that it's possible to offer more. Mm. That dream that you know uh, Piano and Rogers had for the Central Pompidou, this idea that you could plug things in and, and maybe you'll manage it with this. Alfonso. What about hotels? What are they going to be like in 30 for years' me, time? For, to do it in the time, <laughs> not, uh, not to change a lot. But I think they, they, they choose to, to use the, the important dimension. It's also for to, um, to think that this building our one whole factory, where it's possible, if effectively in the time, it's mm -hmm. possible to start our hotel. Maybe there is the dimension is possible to become a different, different function, also because it's mm. very generous uh, with the, uh, in a seconds, in a higher, in a, a federal dimension. It is, I think, is interesting to, to, interest to, 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 for one time, to have not to really reduce the dimension because the problem today in the context is reduce, reduce the dimension, and mm. the end one building is possible to use only for this function. Yeah. It's not in our history because in our history there's more different things. In this, in this case, there is this opportunity. It is opportunity is uh, to give open one door is uh, for to create a contamination uh, in the future how is uh, the, the city or the, the, the site is possible to use in a different way. It is, I think, it's inter interesting because it's not very linked at the function, but it's mm -hmm. linked to our, our one idea and our one vision. Mm. We've run out of time. Thank you very much. <laughs>